Well, uh, as far as electric cars go, uh, it's not a new concept. They've been around since the 1800s um, with the first crude electric carriage. Um, and now we've got GM, Honda, Toyota, Nissan manufacturing EV cars. You said there are three in Canada, but I guess in North America sure. there's there's yeah. probably more. That's right. Um, so what do you see as the future of electric cars? I mean, even though they've been around for a long time, we've got some right now, but um, there, I guess there's resistance as far as really uh, the government's promoting this. Um, the gas companies clearly won't benefit if electric cars become popular. Um, the governments probably won't get taxes from the petroleum that would be used for electric cars. Um, so there are vested interests to probably discourage electric cars from being used, even though the hazards seem to outweigh the benefits because the hazards, when you talk about healthcare, when you talk about eroding buildings and, and the uh, ozone layer and, and everything else that's associated with the uh, burning of gasoline, it seems like um, it's not really being promoted. So what is the future of electric cars? Well, I think nothing will change at this point from our current uh, course uh, until we elect a government with environmental thinking. Um, our government, our federal government today is, uh, is very committed to developing the oil sands in Alberta. Uh, they see that as the key to our, our national wealth. Um, and that's why they are uh, uh, pushing to build pipelines through forested areas, uh, trying to pull out of the Kyoto Accord and whining and dining uh, oil businessmen on taxpayers' dollars in China in hopes of finding uh, buyers for our Canadian oil. Uh, we need to elect a government that thinks more along the lines of, let's say, the Norwegian government. Um, currently, Norway has more electric cars per capita than any other country. Um, in Norway, they have uh, no purchase taxes for electric vehicles. Uh, there are no charges on toll roads for electric vehicles. There's free municipal parking and free access to bus lanes. These are all encouragements to go a direction that's, that's away from the petroleum. Um, and our government needs to do the same. Um, and there's a lot of resistance at this point. But why is Norway ahead when it comes to uh, the sort of technology? I think one thing is that they, they did not have uh, 17 uh, trillion barrels of oil in, uh, in their sand. Uh, that's that's one thing. So it's like they're forced to yes, look at uh, alternatives. Yes, they are. They they have a um, um, they're a smaller country, and they have uh, fewer resources, and they have they have chosen to use those resources more wisely, and uh, and we I think will whether we uh, are there at this point um, or whether we will eventually get there. But uh, we will have to do the same at some point. Um, south of the border, uh, the Obama administration uh, is working very hard on behalf of the environment. Uh, they hope to have a million electric cars on the road by uh, 2015. Uh, they're also working on technologies, battery technologies, that will revolutionize uh, the electric vehicle, um, electric vehicle transportation. Um, the, uh, one of these technologies, the lead foam, cobalt battery uh, has similar specs to the lithium-ion battery, which is currently used in most of the electric cars, but it's only one-fifth the cost. So uh, this is the type of technology uh, Canada should be focused on. Uh, we built the Canada Arm with our clever people and our resources. Um, a century ago, we had state-of-the-art rail, but now we lag behind. Uh, while other countries advance with electric rail and electric vehicles, we continue to drive 4,000 pound steel gas guzzlers to get groceries and drop our kids off at school. So it's really time we changed our game. One of the things that um, we weren't able to show the PowerPoint, but you had uh, talked about people should be driving around golf carts. Right. <laughs> um, well, in the States and other places in the world, they have golf cart communities, and these are not just for seniors, but these are the golf carts, the electric golf carts, are in some areas replacing cars in towns and cities. Um, 
it makes for a cleaner environment. Uh, people seem to uh, really enjoy traveling around in golf carts. Um, now, there are some critical of, uh, of doing this, especially in Canada, because we have uh, such harsh, harsh winters. But if Norway, which have winters, uh, has winters similar to ours, if, if they can be the, the world leader, there's no reason why we can as well. And from a golf cart, it can evolve into something just a little bigger than a golf cart with a roof. So it doesn't have to go from one extreme like, there is a lot of variety in that spectrum. Can I show this? Some of the different vehicles? So I in originally this. included this in a PowerPoint presentation. And essentially, it shows two-seaters and three-seaters, four-seaters, five-seaters, and even six-seaters. So they, we've been so accustomed to driving vehicles that are larger and larger and heavier and heavier that we need to sort of get back Think to. Small. We need to get back to the <laughs> golf carts. More. I'd like to thank you for being with us and talking about electric cars. We're joined by more guests after the break. Stay okay. tuned. Thank it's, you so it's much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome back to Here Now. We were talking about electric cars before the break with John Kerr. And now we're joined by a uh, new guest, Baljeet Bawa, who is the author of Disruptive Innovation. What's the rest of it? What every business leader should know. Exactly. Okay, that tagline I can't seem to get, but that uh, sounds like a great book and we're gonna talk about that. Um, we are talking about technology toys and apps and um, you know technology moving businesses ahead people moving ahead with technology are you afraid of technology or do you embrace it whole wholeheartedly uh, we'd love to hear from you 905-595-5483 give us a call and let us let us know what you think um, or how you feel about technology so Baljeet what uh, inspired you to write this book First right, of all. so let me just give you a little quick brief of about myself. It's Who like are you? twenty. <laughs> 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 okay, my name is Baljeet Bawa, as everybody knows it. I have been in technology since last over twenty-seven years. Actually, when I opened my eyes and uh, just out of the university, technology was the first thing that I started uh, dealing myself with. Uh, since this last twenty-seven years or uh, odd, whatever I have been through, the technology advanced. They, they would. I started with mainframes. And today, we are all the way from mi minis to micros to laptops, and now we have got the iPads. So this all uh, uh, journey had been very inspiring. I learned a lot during this time. So are you one of those people who like are looking out for like what's next? What's the latest? When, exactly. When, when the BlackBerry 10 came out, were you oh, like I was, just wondering I was, what... I watched the whole uh, launch of it, but uh, anyway, that's uh, that's a different uh, aspect of it. But yeah, the book uh, was uh, purely for sum up of all my uh, learnings that I went through in last uh, whatever the years I had been in the market and so on. I put cons put all of them together, not only from technology perspective, but from business side of it, from social side of it, how it Im impacts our lives, day to day lives, right from a kid who just was just born, and today you see them with all those electronic toys around their uh, cradles and so on. We never watched those things before, mm -hmm. and going all the way down uh, up to the level of uh, big CEOs of Apple and Microsoft or RIM and so on. What, how these technologies, they impact them from day to day. And that's exactly what this book talk, talks about. I remember, um, you know, not to date myself, but I remember the Sony Walkman was like the biggest exactly. thing when, you and, know. And that <laughs> was actually a disruptive innovation in the music industry, how the music is carried. Instead of having big, those platforms where you play the music and it's always stationed at one place, 
you can only hear in the room or somewhere that you have the access to it. Mm -hmm. Walkmans, they took out that music on the streets, on the roads, wherever, on, on the access, you're traveling, you're listening to this. and at It was exactly. the coolest thing to wear the, yes. the headphones and yep. walk around with, you Exactly, know, and they used to be big Listening to the radio. Exactly, <laughs> yes, yes. So that, that's, that's uh, we, I have uh, given that example in my book itself. So if you read the book through, uh, it, the book actually uh, indulges you and involves your brain around it, that how technology, uh, the disruptive technology, or I would say disruptive innovation. Yes, the original term is disruptive technology. Mm -hmm. That how technology is, disruptive is actually a very negative yeah, word. Yeah, tell me, what right? is the definition of disruptive innovation? <coughs> what yeah. is that? So disruptive innovation, before that, you need to understand what is actually technology or sustaining technology. So sustaining technology is more of uh, typically uh, an innovation, an innovation of a new product, which does not exist out there. People, they're looking for it. So you build a new product but they are very expensive when they come into the market and so and so on. That's the sustaining. And sustaining uh, technology or sustaining innovations, they happen day to day with different companies, big manufacturers. They come out, they sell their products, and they're all looking out for is profits. And the market that they are reaching is a very, uh, very small market. It's, it's the people those who are always looking for the new things, like you, me, and we, we, we do that. Whereas disruptive innovation, is a concept. It's building on the existing product, but coming out with something which is creating a total new market, a market not only from the product side of it, but from the pricing side of it. So if I give you a very simple example, when the f automobiles were uh, uh, invented, mm -hmm. they were so expensive. They were considered as a luxury items. They were not, they did not change the transportation. So it was a technology which was invented but it did not have any disruption on the innovation part of it. In 1908, when Ford came out with the first Model T, the cheapest car can be put on the and mass production, that thing changed how the automobiles are looked at. The automobile went into the normal market where people, they started accepting it. Okay, now it's not a luxury item. That was called, that, was, that is the uh, disruptive innovation. And now, just our previous, uh, uh, person who was talking about the EVs. Mm -hmm. Electric cars, they are existing. They are there in, since long. And when I was talking to him outside, and I said, wow, that is disruptive innovation because he said he's going to bring out a car which is under $10,000. And I, I, I'm really looking forward for that. And the day that happens, you will see how the electric cars will be there on the roads. Will become popular. So, exactly. So I guess if the cost of that vehicle, electric vehicle, yes. can come down, it'll become yes. It'll snap up like It'll just snap cakes. up like that. <laughs> so disruptive innovation is more of a concept. It's a concept of marketing, not a concept of a product or building a new product. Hmm. So uh, we've heard uh, more about sustaining in innovations and how is that different from disruptive innovation? So that's exactly as I said, is when a new product is launched in the market and that, that market is going only to a very small segment of the people. Mm -hmm. The prices are high, the access to that product is very limited. And that's the sustaining. And okay. whereas the disruptive part is a different part of it, when you're building a new product which is reaching to the mass, which is reaching to a bigger scale of the market with bare minimum prices, the prices that anybody can afford it. So you can call it a poor man's car. Okay. Right? All right. That's it. Um, so in general, do you think that people embrace technology as they should? Uh, to my uh, understanding, yes, and very much because today, if I, and especially like, uh, let's, let's take the uh, current situation or the scenario of the world. In last 15 to 20 years, technology has advanced so much that today, without technology, even the kids are not born in the hospital. It's all those new machines, the x-rays, the lasers, and all that stuff. That has made the life so very dependent on technology. Today, without a technology, you can't, you can't just live. It's, it's that simple. So accepting of technology, yes, it is there. Mm -hmm. Now, with the access to technology, even in the villages, talk of the third world countries or back home there in India and in Pakistan and so on, cell phone is one of the technology which has disrupted the whole living style of it. Five years ago, 10 years ago, communication methods to those places was only through either a telephone, 
which was a landline. Mm -hmm. That also very rarely somebody would have it. Or you write a letter and send it by post and so on. Those days are gone. They are connected well. They are well connected to the world, whatever is happening. Doesn't matter what happens here. Mm -hmm. Maybe people are watching out or what we are talking right now, somewhere very remote site. That's all the technology. So technology is, yes, definitely it is very well accepted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess it's... Probably uh, more accepted by the younger generation. They, they seem, mm -hmm. the younger generation seems to be a little bit more uh, friendly and in tune with the latest that comes out. Thank you for making me feel young. No, I'm young too. What are you talking about? Yeah, so younger generation like... you talking about the yes. Sony <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so younger generation, yes, uh, it is, uh, because they, they are brought, born, and they see these uh, toys uh, all over around them. But uh, technology is well accepted by our um, uh, seniors also. And if uh, I'll give you another example on that, which is disruptively change the way how seniors, they live their life. Previously, they were very vulnerable when they get, as you get older, you become vulnerable to access to the uh, to services. Now. If you, people might know it, they wear a small little tag and you press if you are in distress. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, all the services, all the help from ambulance, uh, police, everything is right there. That's also a part of your uh, disruptive innovation. It, the technology is all over there. Whether you accept it or not, some way or the other, it's, it exists. Tell me a little bit about the thought, thought process that uh, went into writing your book. Oh, that's, uh, that's a very good... Uh, I don't know whether I should have an answer for that or not because this thought process had been going on since quite a long, uh, quite a few, uh, couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I was always afraid of writing. I, I'm bad. I, I can't even, you know, sign myself. Anything. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's <laughs> gotcha. a joke. Yeah. But so uh, one of my friends, he came along and he says, Baljeet, like you have got the idea, just, just start scribbling. Just put the ideas, put the concepts in and he'll... Uh, you know, uh, put them into some sort of a shape and so on. And uh, my other co-author, Percy Dastur, who, who had, with whom I wrote this book along with, uh, he helped me out to compile all those things in, in a shape of a book. Mm -hmm. And that's how the whole process started. Yeah, it took over, over, uh, over a year before I wrote down everything while I was traveling, I was in the plane or you were in the, you know, go stay, go uh, bus or go train and so on. I was always putting some of the other thoughts that was coming around and so on. And that all, when it came out, I was surprised that he actually ended up uh, putting into a public uh, publication. Okay. So what are some examples of disruptive innovation? You already mentioned a few, but yeah. maybe a few more that you didn't mention. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll just, so disruptive innovation, it is, it's not only in technology. As I said, it's a concept, and it works in every field. Mm -hmm. Very uh, simple one, which I always uh, use it, entertainment or sports. Everybody knows cricket used to be five-day game. You have to...